declarative programming languages have several advantages over traditional languages. For example, programs in such languages are considerably shorter than equivalent programs in imperative languages. Here, for example, is a program in C. And here is the equivalent program in Erlang. Hello. Hello, Joe. Hello, Mike. Question. Does anyone care about the differences between declarative and imperative languages anymore? Don't be silly. The declarative-imperative debate is always a crowd-pleaser. From what I can tell, kids these days are going with what's cool, like Node.js and Ruby on Rails. Let's ask Robert. Hello, Robert. Hello, Mike. Joe's back to talking about declarative languages again. I just think Erlang's got a problem when its spokesman is an old fuddy-duddy. Hey, Joe? Bite me. Robert, what do you think? Erlang's the shizzer, but I can't blame kids for picking something a little less crusty. Erlang's image is stuck in the 1980s. It's the bananarama of languages. Okay. Tell you what. This is bullshit. If kids these days don't want to use Erlang, which is the real rock star tech, then fuck it. I'll turn this video off and go home. Take my nine nines with me. Joe. I didn't mean anything by it. Yeah, Joe. Mike was just trying to be constructive. Joe, turn the video back on. I won't. I won't have Erlang disparaged. Yo, yo, yo. I can totally help you, geezers. Who said that? All Erlang needs is an image upgrade. That's very interesting. Lots of things from the 80s are cool. Just look at Fraggle Rock and Super Mario Brothers. What the hell is that? It's one of those Ruby hipsters. Watch it, Grandpa. Just because I carry my Mac in a messenger bag and have great taste in nose rings doesn't mean I use Ruby. I for one am interested in what the little girl has to say. Yo, whatever. First we have to fix the name. A language named after a 19th century Danish mathematician is about as cool as having a Facebook account. It's just like the olden days when Erlang was banned. We had to change the name. That's right. When Erlang fell out of fashion at Ericsson, we changed the name to OTP. Three of the trendiest names we could think of. Open. Telecom. Platform. Gives me the chills just thinking about it. Okay. That's bullcrap. No one cares about telecom platforms. We need something fresh. Something edgy. Like Erlang on Rails. Jesus Christ. The last thing you want to do is imitate. No, something original. How about Erlang++? Plus plus? I got it. We keep OTP, but with a hip, edgy twist. Check it. Your language will hereby be known as Outlaw. Techno. Psycho bitch. It does spell OTP. Don't know what it has to do with software. What do you think, Joe? I absolutely love it. That name is fucking gangster. Yeah, Joe. You rule. Okay, next thing we need is a video that is just as cool as the original Erlang the movie, but speaks to today's programmer hipster. I'm thinking something like this. Yo, what up bitches, Rex here. This time I'm talking about a badass new language called Outlaw Techno Psycho Bitch, or OTP for short. So, you all know I'm a huge Ruby fan. Ruby gives you 15 ways to do the same thing, and freedom of choice is good. Then I realized that's just 15 different ways to create really slow, crappy programs. Then I started using Node.js. I like Node because, as my hero Ryan Dahl says, it's like coloring with crayons and playing with Duplo blocks. But as it turns out, it's less like playing with Duplo blocks, and more like playing with Slinkies. Slinkies that get tangled together and impossible to separate. So then I checked out Outlaw Techno Psycho Bitch. It's a language out of Sweden that can be used to build web scale. Asynchronous, not blocking, sharded, event driven, message passing, no sequel, reliable, highly available, high performance, real time, clusterable, badass, rockstar, get the girls. Get the voice, impress your mom, impress your cat, applications. Brian Dahl, my hero, says, we should not be supporting more programming languages, that we should be killing them, that all these bullshit projects are confusing people, but Psycho Bitch is just so damn cool, I couldn't resist giving it a try. The first thing Psycho Bitch kills off is curly braces. Thank God. 
After a half century of curly braces, we need something that's fresh. Psycho Bitch uses single character block delimiters, like in sentences. My hero Ryan Dahl, says, math is not necessary, that people who think it's superior to curly braces are wrong. But, I figure, if math can get a rover to Mars, maybe it can help us write better programs. Psycho Bitch gets pretty uptight about logic, if you say, that X is 1, and then turn around, and say X is 2, Psycho Bitch goes apeshit, she's like, what the hell, when did 1 start equaling 2? Psycho Bitch has this great feature called pattern matching. You define the patterns, and if there's a match, your program keeps going. If something doesn't match, it crashes. Like assertions, but built in. What happens when your program crashes? Psycho Bitch has you covered, it monitors your code. And restarts things that break, it's like the Terminator. You can blast it in the face with a shotgun, it stops for a second. Then keeps on coming. I've written a chat server in Psycho Bitch. It's where all my friends and me can chat about how awesome Ryan Dahl is. Because the server is written in Psycho Bitch, it can easily handle thousands of concurrent users. Shit, did I say thousands? Because I meant tens of thousands. And by tens of thousands, I mean hundreds of thousands. I'm already logged in as myself at the top. I'll log in as another user. You say something using the tell command. The messages are received instantly, even though there are hundreds of thousands of connected users. I'll use the yell command to broadcast a message to every user. That literally sent the message to 300,000 users. About a second. Okay, 300,000 concurrent users is impressive. But even Node.js can do that. Let's try something hard. To make things interesting, we'll trigger a bug on the server. Damn, I must have said something bad. But as you can see, Mary and Jack can still chat. Of the 300,000 users on the server, I'm the only one affected. Let's see if we can fix the bug. Here's the code. Holy crap. It looks like the original programmer, in his zeal, added some forbidden utterances. Let's clean this up, because we don't want to censor. Okay. I recompiled the code. Next, I'll reload it. In real time, with 300,000 concurrent chats going on. Done. In case you missed it, here it is again. In slow motion. For some of you, what you just saw, is not self-explanatory. If gracefully handling bugs, with hundreds of thousands of concurrent sessions, and fixing them in real time without stopping the server seems passe, you can always use Ruby. Then, when your app doesn't scale, move to Node.js. Then, when you can't maintain your code because it's a pile of tangled slinkies, move to Psycho Bitch. With that experience, you can appreciate what you just saw, for the rest of you. Yes, that just happened. So, what do you guys think about Psycho Bitch? She's utterly terrifying. It makes me wonder if perhaps Psycho Bitch is a real person. You mean, is the name based on my experience with a girlfriend who's batshit crazy, drop dead gorgeous, brilliant, and brags to her friends about costing me tens of thousands of dollars in therapy over the last three years? Oh shit, I know a girl like that. She scarred me for life. Literally. Seriously, I'll show you the scars.